What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video we're going to be talking about curtain walls in Revit. Uh, the idea behind this video is to first explore some of the basic settings and options that you have when it comes to curtain walls. So that's what we're going to be concentrating in the first half of the video. Now in the second half we're just going to be taking all of that and putting it to the test on an actual project. So I'm going to be showing you how to complete uh, like a whole kind of curtain wall facade project where we have to adapt our curtain wall to an existing building and I'm just going to be showing you everything step by step how something like that is done. So that's the whole idea behind this video. Now before we jump into Revit I would just like to take a minute to talk about today's video sponsor which is Kuhom. So Kuhom uh, is an all-in-one visualization uh, and design tool for interior design. So it works basically where you have the ability to create a floor plan, either design a complete new floor plan or you can just kind of model the floor plan that you already have of a building where you want to do interior design uh, and then it's time to add some models. Now in terms of models uh, you actually get over a hundred thousand different models which you can use. Now this includes both furniture, lighting, decor, pretty much everything that you need for your well interior design. Now once you're happy with the design that you have created you can easily easily visualize all of that by using Using their cloud rendering. So it, it includes cloud rendering so that basically means that you're not really using your computer uh, and everything is done just like in seconds you get these beautiful renderings. Also something that kind of <laughs> grabbed my attention that I really really like is the AI decorator. So it has like built-in uh, artificial intelligence where you basically tell it kind of what you want to have in terms of design and it can actually generate an interior design of a room for you. So the computer, artificial intelligence, designs a room for you. And then you can just take it from there, obviously, if you have anything that you want to change, anything that you want to improve, you can obviously do that. Also, it has full 720 visual tours, which basically means that you can, well, you can kind of walk around and see how that uh, building would look or how that interior design would look as if you were inside uh, inside of the rooms, kind of looking around, uh, that's available as well. Also, the best thing is, well, it's free to try out. So you can sign up. I'm going to leave a link uh, just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above and you can sign up for free. And then if you decide to go with one of the paid options, either Pro or Ultimate or whatever you, uh, you choose to go with, uh, you actually get a 50% discount by using the Kuhong Balkan Architect discount code. Uh, so just enter that and you get a 50% discount. Uh, also, uh, this is uh, browser based, but there are both Windows and Mac OS apps available. And now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. Uh, so here I am in Revit, and as you can see here, I have uh, just placed three curtain walls here. And uh, you will notice that if I go to the wall command, open that up, here uh, under curtain walls, you can see that we have three types. Now I have placed all three types here. So this is the, the regular like curtain wall, this is the exterior glazing, and then this one is storefront. So if I just hit the escape key a couple of times here, let's explore what do we get. So the regular one, uh, just the curtain wall one, is just one big piece of glass. It doesn't really have any separation, any grids, and also it doesn't include any mullions. Uh, on the other hand, the second one, uh, which is this one over here, the exterior glazing, it does have separations, so it does have these curtain grids. So you can see like we have different like panels of glass uh, here, uh, but that's pretty much all that we get. We still don't get any mullions. And then finally, for the storefront one, we do get both the separation, so both the grids, as well as the mullions, which are these families here. Uh, so this is basically this can be used for different stages of the design, perhaps kind of the initial stage you go with the regular one, and then you add some separation and then finally you add the mullions or depending on uh, how much changes you want to make. So if, the, if this for example fits your project you might just go with this uh, or if you have perhaps something a bit more complicated perhaps you want to start off with a blank one no grids no anything and then you can kind of start from there and start adding both the grids and the mullions and then this is like a halfway between. 
Uh, now I'm just going to delete both of these. Uh, this also kind of uh, is important when it comes to deleting these because uh, curtain walls are basically a system family that's made out of uh, component families. So inside uh, we have this, if I just select this, this is the curtain wall. But also I can select the panel and then also I can select the mullion and then finally I can select the grid. So because they are kind of complicated, if you make a selection like this, you can select a lot of elements on the curtain wall without selecting the actual curtain wall. So if I go here to filter, it's going to say panels, wall grids, mullions, but no curtain walls. If I select like this, let's select two of these and then go to filter. Now these are actual walls. So that's just kind of the difference. And let's now just delete those two. Okay, let's start with this one and let's now look into some of the parameters and options that we get for setting these up. So uh, if I select this curtain wall, uh, first in the properties panel, we get the instance properties. So everything that you get here are instance properties. We also get, uh, we well, initially we get like the regular constraints just like any other wall but then below here we have the options for the vertical and horizontal grid uh, now the options here are number which is grayed out and i'm going to talk about that a little bit later on next we have the justification the angle and the offset so let's talk about justification uh, here uh, on the vertical grids uh, here it's set to beginning and if i change this it's not really going to have much effect uh, just because of the layout style but for the horizontal grid, you can see that here the justification is set to beginning. And here we have like a full panel on the bottom. Next, we have a couple of full panels. And then on top, we have these kind of, I don't know, like a quarter panels or something like that. Now, if I were to change this justification from the beginning to the end on the horizontal one and hit apply, as you can see, it's going to start with a full panel on top and then it's going to go down and whatever's left over on the bottom is going to be, well, that small panel. Uh, and then finally, you have the center option. So if you go to center, it's just going to kind of give you two full panels and then on top and bottom, you get these kind of like, I don't know, like half panels or whatever. And let's just go back to beginning Hit apply. Okay, uh, next we have the angle. So here for the angle, it's I think it's fairly self-explanatory. If you change the angle to like 15 degrees, hit apply. As you can see, the grid is just going to be tilted at 15 degrees, if that's something that you want to do for some reason. <laughs> okay, uh, let's now go into edit type. So the edit type gives you the uh, type properties or type parameters for this uh, curtain wall. Now here under construction, this is really interesting because here you get your curtain panels. Now currently it's set to glazed, which basically means glass, uh, but you can actually change it to something like solid. So if I hit apply, it, as you can see now it's solid. You can no longer see through this. So it's just a solid panel. Uh, it looks a lot better in perhaps shaded or consistent colors or realistic, whatever. So currently it looks like that. Now if I go back to edit type, if I go back to, oops, if I go back to glazed, apply. Now we have just the windows. Now you might be thinking, okay, how do I make it without any glass? And this is a common mistake. People tend to go all the way up and set this to none and hit apply. But you see, you still get glass. It's still kind of bluish. If you don't want any panels at all, you have to go here and set this to uh, empty. So you have this kind of empty panel. And when you set it to empty, now you can see it's completely empty. If I add some shadows, yeah, you don't really get anything there. So it's completely empty. So that's basically how it works. If you don't want any panels, you have to set it to that. Uh, moving forward, uh, also something that you may have noticed is you can actually pick out regular walls. So for your panels, you can create them just as regular walls and then you can pick them out here. So if I go with, I don't know, like brick on metal stud and then hit apply, as you can see now here we have bricks. So you can do that. I don't know why would you want to do that, but you can if you want. Uh, moving forward, uh, here we have the layout. Now this is the kind of the other place where we can set up the layout. And you can see that here it's set to maximum spacing. So that basically means that for the vertical grids, so those are, or these are the vertical elements here, 
Uh, those are at maximum spacing. So basically it's not going to go past this number. You also have minimum spacing. So in that case, it's not going to go below this number. Uh, you also have a fixed number. Now, if you set it to fixed number and you hit apply and okay, now here in the properties panel, as you can see, the number for the vertical grid can be changed. So if I go to eight, hit apply, it's just going to add another uh, another grid. If I go to four, hit apply, it's just going to make less of them. Fairly self-explanatory. In some cases, this might be useful. In most cases, it isn't in my experience. So let's go here to maximum spacing, hit apply, and just go back. Uh, also here, we have the same thing for the horizontal one. And then finally, here we have the mullions. So the mullions uh, basically have uh, three types here. So the, the interior type, which is all of the mullions that are kind of in the middle. Uh, then you have the border types. So border type one is like the vertical one that's, I don't know, like on top. And this one is like on the bottom. And the same thing goes with the horizontal ones uh, or not the, the on top, like on the beginning or at the end. And then here it's on top and the bottom and all the interior one is obviously the, the interior ones. So that's basically how this works. You can uh, adjust the mullions here. So you have uh, different options by default. You have like a circular ones and then you have the rectangular ones and then you can pick out whichever mullion that you might want to use for that. So that's kind of the, the basic settings. Now that's kind of boring. Let's go and let's jump into the actual project and see what we can actually do with this. Okay, so now let's take a look at an actual project. So as you can see here on the screen, I have something that kind of looks like a building. So we have just one floor on the bottom uh, and then above that we have just a couple of floors. So level one and level two. And then also I've added the ceilings below that because usually this is something that you would see uh, in a building in a building such as uh, such as this one that has like a curtain wall. Usually this is done for office spaces, but it can be done for different types of architecture. But usually you would see these uh, ceilings here as well. So now let's see how can we adjust this. So uh, we have gone over kind of the the the, the regular adjustments in terms of and just assigning the, the layout rules and the spacing and so on. So you can do all of that here, but in most cases, that's not going to be enough. So this is one of those cases. Usually it's not going to look just like this. It's definitely not going to look just like this. So let's see uh, how can we improve this. Now you can get an extra level of customization by uh, moving the grids around. So if I hover over one of these elements here, perhaps if I turn on the thin lines and if I hit the tab key a few times, see how it kind of highlights this uh, dashed blue line. You will see also down uh, in the lower uh, left corner here, uh, if I go over that again, so I hit the tab key a couple of times, it says uh, grid line. So if I select that, you can see that it's pinned in place and this is basically the grid line that uh, that controls the position of all of the horizontal mullions here. Now I can unpin that simply by clicking on this little pin and then I can actually move it around. So I can move it up and down uh, and it no longer corresponds to the rules that we have set, uh, set up in the edit type menu. Now, once I have done this, now I can adjust it. So for example, here, I want it to align. So the top of this mullion, I want it to align with the top of this floor here. Uh, usually that's something that you would see in offices. So what I would do is move this temporary width, uh, uh, dimension witness line down to the top here. And then here I would enter the magic number, which is uh, 25 millimeters. Now, why is that the magic number? Well, for that, I have to go to the level one floor plan and create a small section here just to explain. So let's double click on the section head and let's zoom in here. So if I now turn the thin lines back on, you will see that now the top of the mullion perfectly aligns with the top of the floor. And here, this is that grid line. So the mullion is, well, the center of the mullion is in the center of the grid line. And if I select the mullion itself, here just grayed out, it's going to say rectangular mullion 50 by 150 millimeters, which means that it's 50 millimeters uh, wide. 
So 50 divided by 2 gives us 25, so from the center off to the top we have 25 millimeters and that's why I use that number, so it's pretty self-explanatory actually, uh, now that I think about it. Now we want to do the same thing here, so again you hover over one of the mullions, you hit the tab key a couple of times until you highlight the curtain grid, you select it, you unpin it, and then you can just move this witness line here for example, give it that magic number and now that's aligned perfectly as well. Uh, now with the upper one here I wanted to actually align where the bottom of the curtain mullion aligns perfectly with the bottom of the ceiling. Uh, now for that we actually want to know the thickness of the ceiling because uh, I cannot really align it that easily. So what I like to do is I like to go here to the section, zoom in here, and then I measure, so just a regular measure tool, from the top to the bottom of the ceiling, which is 57 millimeters. So I take that number, and now I know that I should have like uh, that, uh, basically that center of the of the curtain grid. This line should be 25 millimeters from the bottom here, or measuring from the top. Uh, that would be 57 minus 25, which is, I think, 32. So if I select this here, unpin it, and place it here, and type in 32, it should align properly. There we go, it did. Or if you don't want to do the math, you can move it up here, and then move the witness line here, and type the, the, the 25 dimension, and now we get the same result. So which way, whichever way you choose to do this, you get the same result and you have that perfect alignment. Uh, now moving forward, uh, if I just go back here, obviously we have aligned these pretty well, but we're now kind of missing some curtain uh, grids. We might want to have one here at the ceiling level and here at the ceiling level, so how do we do that? Well, for that we go here to the build panel on the architecture tab and there we have the curtain grid. So just click on the curtain grid, you go with all segments, you hover over one of the vertical ones and it gives you a horizontal line. If you hover over the horizontal ones it gives you a, well, a vertical line. So it's fairly simple and you just place, you click, hit the escape key a couple of times, there we go. So we want one there, we'll align it better later on, let's go again to curtain grid, place one here as well, hit the escape key a couple of times, and then you can just go to the section and you can align that here. So for example in this one, I would just, actually I would just move it up like this to make it a bit easier, I would move the witness line down, 25, perfect, same thing goes here, so move the witness line down, 25, perfect. Okay, so we have something that looks now a lot better. Now we have mullions that actually correspond to some of the elements inside of the facade, and usually that's, or inside of the building, and usually that's how it would work. Now moving forward, uh, let's try to edit this vertically. So here we have one in the center, and let's say we want to have like a large door here. Uh, 1.4 plus 1.4, so that would mean these two panels, that's 2.8 meters, which might be a bit too large for a door, but I think 2 meters is more than enough, so I can just hit the tab key a few times, until I select the vertical grid, I can unpin that, and then here I can type in 1000, which is just going to move it in a little bit. I can do the same thing for this one here, unpin that, and move that to 1000, and then it's going to look like that. So once I have done that, I can zoom in here, hit the tab key a few times to select this line here, and then, or this grid line, and then you here you have the option to add or remove segments. So even though the grid line is going all the way through from the bottom to the top, you can actually remove segments in some of these uh, fields. So if I click here to add remove segments, I can remove the segment down here below, so now this no longer has that uh, mullion in the middle. Also now I can select this, perhaps remove this one as well, I think it would just look a little bit better. There we go, I think that looks a lot nicer. Uh, and now here we have an opening for a door. Also for the door, usually you want to unpin these uh, bottom uh, mullions and delete them, because you don't want people tripping over your mullions here. So you just unpin, you hit delete, and there we go. Now if you want to place a door here, I actually have a video on how to do that, so I'm not going to go over that right now, but if you want to see it, it's going to be up there in the cards above. 
Okay, moving forward, now we can make some additional adjustments. For example, I can go here, hit the tab key a few times, select the vertical grid line here, unpin that, and uh, here we seem to have, what's this, two, that's 3.2 meters. So we can divide that, what do we get if I just take my trusty old calculator here? So that's 3.2 meters. 320 centimeters divided by 3, that's 106, so let's go with, let's go like this and unpin it, let's go with 100 and, well, let's go 106, oops, 100, 1060 because that's in millimeters, so now we have kind of a, a better uh, layout here. Obviously we have to add one more vertical grid here, so for that I would go to uh, curtain grids, place it here, click, there we go, hit the tab key a few times, there we go, and it's actually 170, 170, so, or 1070, 1070, so I'm quite happy with that, so I'm just going to leave that layout as is. I'm going to repeat the same thing on this side, so this is 1060, add an additional grid, curtain grid, you just go to the horizontal one, you place it, there we go. Now it's time to, well, add some windows. So how do you add windows on a facade such as this one? Well, uh, you can just make smaller uh, partitions here in the mullions. So for example, for adding windows on a facade like this one, what I would do is go to curtain grid, and then you don't have to create a grid that covers all segments. You have the option to create that uh, create a grid on only one segment. So if I come here, and let's say I want to offset that 1000 millimeters from the ground or 900, let's do 920, I can just come and click. And as you can see, it's going to create a grid that goes all the way through, but it's only going to be applied in this, uh, in this field here. And now uh, if I select that, go to add remove segments, I can just add segments here wherever I want to see them. So for example, I want to add them like that. Uh, now one thing to keep in mind here, if I just go again to and do the same thing here on the floor above, so I think we did 920, yeah like that. If you place one, you're not going to have the ability to place one here at the same position at uh, 920. So you would have to select this and use that add remove segments. You don't have the ability to uh, just uh, add new grid lines because then you would kind of overlap grid lines and that just wouldn't work. Uh, and then to create windows over here, uh, that's also possible and, and I show that in that video where I show how to do the doors. It's the same story for windows so I'm not going to do that again. So just check the cards above for that video. But there we go, now we have a layout that is starting to look really, really well. Uh, one more thing that I would do here is, uh, if I just take a look here, you may notice that here we can see uh, between the, uh, the gap that's between the ceiling and the floor. And you don't want that. Usually you don't want to represent that on a, uh, on a facade, you don't want to have a window there. Here you would usually have some sort of installations, things So what I want to do here for this gap is to, well, I'll actually mask it off. So how do you do that? Well, you can hover over one of these panels, you hit the tab key once or twice, you can select the panel, and then there's this cool little trick where you can right click, go to select panels, and go along the horizontal grid. So it's just going to select all horizontal panels here, which is perfect. Uh, and then what you want to do is you want to unpin them. Now you can go manually and unpin each one, that would obviously take some time, so what I like to do is just go up here uh, to the uh, unpin tool, UP is the shortcut, you just click on that and it's just going to unpin all of them. And then you can exchange it from a glazed one to a solid one, so it's just going to kind of mask out that uh, basically that gap. And here I would usually use something like a mirrored panel or something like that. You can adjust the material and then it would look really good. So let's select this one as well. Right click, uh, select panels, along horizontal grid, unpin here and then apply that solid one. And finally let's do this the same thing here. Select it, oops, 
Let's try that again. Right click, select panels, horizontal, unpin, and then you go with solid. And there we go. That's how you create a really cool, really unique uh, curtain facade. So it's not as easy as just placing a curtain facade, but if you want customization, this is the way to this is the way to go. One thing that I see here is I don't like the fact that here we have a segment, so perhaps get rid of that. Yeah, now it looks much nicer. So there we go. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more of these advanced uh, cool tricks in Revit, I'd like to ask you to check out my intermediate to advanced level course. It's going to be available in the description just below this video. And then also I'm going to link it, link it up in the cards above. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.